drive this truck for five days, it won't start. Battery drains in five days. But if I do drive it every other day, it starts just fine. I have no idea how old the battery is. It's a regular alkaline battery. I got this AGM battery from my friend Bill Martini. Uh, I've charged it up. It shows 60% health, 100% charged. It's rated at 750 CCAs, which is the same as this. I think it'll fit in the battery box. I'm gonna try an AGM battery in here and see if it will last more than a week without having to recharge. If that doesn't work, I'll have to buy a new battery. I did check whether or not this drains the battery. Uh, it doesn't. I used the thermostat, thermal one, and I did the alternator and all that, and there's no tremendous uh, elect electricity draw. It's just a weak battery, perhaps. So I'm gonna try the AGM. I know the AGM batteries are supposed to hold a charge really well. Uh, they're a lot more expensive than regular batteries. And uh, we'll see if it's just 60% cleaned out all the terminals and stuff. I'll show it to you. So this is a Duralast Platinum. Uh, I've cleaned the terminals, as you can see. They're nice and shiny. And this is an H6 AGM battery at uh, 760 cold cranking amps. So I think this battery is definitely better than the one that uh, I, I got this truck with. So we'll just swap it out. Um, when I do loosen the terminals on this one, I'm gonna attach the alligator clips to this uh, jumper pack so that I don't lose my preset settings on my radio and all that stuff and the PCM and all that. I don't know if it's really necessary, but uh, I just wanted to see if that works. So I did all that for nothing, you know why? Because if you look at where the battery terminals are located, this one's all the way over here and this one's not gonna reach. That one's fine, but this one's not gonna reach. The positive part is not gonna reach there. If I flipped it around and positive's on this side, this still won't reach up to here. Yeah, it won't reach. So I gotta put everything back again. So that was a big waste of time, other than the fact that I did clean the terminals and I sprayed some uh, fluid film on the terminals so it won't corrode. Uh, I accidentally disconnected the power to the thing when I was changing it. So now the PCM was reset. So now I gotta go drive around and have the computer learn my driving habits. <laughs> I was just walking my dog Boba and um, he's throwing out a lawnmower and here he's throwing out a second lawnmower but I see that it's electric so I don't want it. Do I want it? No. So let me back up. I know you guys just saw the beginning because I was just recording what I, what I could at the moment. So I'm walking my dog, Boba, his nightly walk. It's quiet, it's pretty warm, it's dark. And as I'm turning the corner, uh, a neighbor on one of the streets is pulling out a lawnmower and he just puts it there. And I says, hey, you throwing that out? And in broken English, I think it was Russian or Ukrainian or something like that. He says, yes, works, just dirty. I buy electric. Everybody's going electric, not me. Anyway, I says, ooh, can I have it? <laughs> he goes, sure. So I had to walk like two blocks because I was walking my dog. So I've got Boba on one hand, a garbage bag of poo on my other hand, <laughs> pushing the, the, the mower home, which I did. As I'm turning the corner, I see him pull out another mower onto the curb. So I'm like, oh, let me go home and get my truck and drive over and pick that one up too. As you guys saw from that video clip that I just showed, it was the electric mower. So I just kept on going around the block because it's garbage day tomorrow and uh, it's pretty warm. So maybe people are starting to take out their lawn mowers, trying it, not working. So they're chucking them, you know? 
I didn't see anything else. But I'm gonna show you the mower that I just got from that guy. So here's the mower that Boba and I just picked up. It's the True Variable Speed Troy Built with the big wheel in the back, the high wheel in the back, self-propelled in the front, Troy Built TB240, 21 inch cutting deck, self-propelled mower with a Honda engine on it. Is that a score? There's no bagger, but this is a decent machine. Look. The deck has some few scratches here and there and absolutely no rust because I'm sure he kept it in the garage. Look at the front wheels. Excellent condition. It needs two bolts over here to keep the handle straight. And the bail handle stuck back in there. I would think that this would be good to use. Uh, let's take a look on the bottom. go looks good so anyway i wanted to show you guys what i just picked up this is my first um lawnmower pick of 2023 awesome uh let me go and back into the house and uh tomorrow we'll wake up and we'll uh troubleshoot this and see if we can get this thing going Okay, so it's the next morning and I wake up to no power. Why? Well, because they're uh, reinforcing the wires on my poles. So I had to move my truck to get it out of the way. And they're right here on my corner. Never get me to touch those electric lines. PSE, PS -E -N G. No coffee, nothing. I'm dying here. So here you go, guys. Here's the Troy built I picked up last night. I'm gonna work on this today, see if we can get this baby started and running well so I can list it for sale. And of course, as you saw from my time lapse, my friend Mark, who gave me that red yard machines, he also came over today and gave me this. Holy cow. Look at that, huh? So this is, I've actually never had this before. It's a Craftsman AYP product, because it starts with a 917 on the serial number. It's a PYT9000. I've never seen a PYT9000, but it looks like one of those deluxe ones, like a, um, you know, like a yard machine, uh, like a yard gar uh, tractor. So you ready for this? It starts, runs, and drives. <laughs> uh, Mark got it for free. He was gonna fix it up for his son, but his son didn't want a used one. He wanted a new one. I said, well, get ready to pay four or $5,000. He wanted a John Deere zero turn, you know? Anyway, this is a 24 horsepower, Briggs & Stratton V-Twin. Like I said, it starts and runs. Uh, this is a 250 cca battery runs well it has electric pto so it has a amp gauge here and it has the hour meter let's see let's run the power for a second and see how much how many hours wow 1361 hours that's a lot for a residential one wouldn't you agree that's a lot uh, electric PTO, it does have the key. Like I said, it was a PYT 9000. Look at the bull bar it has. Isn't that cool? Tires are uh, look good, they all hold air. I believe he greased the uh, fittings there because there's some wet grease there. Um, when he got it, the blades underneath were the four star MTD ones. This takes the AYP five star ones. So this currently has no blades. I did engage the PTO and it does work. 
because this is a rear gas tank machine with a v-twin engine in it it has to have a fuel pump therefore the gas tank is in the back and the fuel pump sucks the gas to the front the batteries in the front and for you enthusiasts uh, mark said he couldn't find any information on this model according to the serial number it looks like it's a 1997 machine something 22nd maybe january january 22nd 1997 or it could be February 5th, 09. I don't know if this is an 09, I'm not sure. Leave it in the comments, guys, if you can tell what the date of manufacture is on this tractor. Gas tank in the back, so the spigot is in the back. It's got a cup holder, it is a hydrostatic transmission. And I did drive this here. Height adjustment is missing the bezel, the plastic bezel that surrounds this. I don't know if I have that. Good rear tires, some rust. There's the transmission disengage, and it does come with a bagger, triple bagger. Scores! Like I said, it does need blades. I have plenty of five star blades. It's in okay shape, you know. A little bit of rust and cracks there. Um, I don't know if I would fix that. Need some mustard colored paint. And also he wire, he routed the belts wrong when he took the deck off to take the blades out. The belt is on wrong. But uh, this will be my next project since it's already here. So uh, I'm gonna put it in the garage and then we're gonna work on this today and get this baby running. First thing I got to do is I got to find a couple of bolts to secure this handle. He took the bolts out and kept them because they're the wingtip kinds, I think. But I'll just find a couple of bolts to keep this handle straight. And then we'll see if this baby starts up because it's in great shape. And I haven't had my coffee yet, so I'm a little crabby. All right, so I got a couple of bolts there. Now the handle's staying put. Let's check the oil and the gas. Let's check the Earl first. Hondas have a nice convenient dipstick here. Dipstick? Cletus, you know what you are. You're a dipstick. A 14 carat dipstick. I like using that clip. I know you guys like Roscoe P. Coltrane too. <laughs> oh, I don't think there's any Earl in here. <laughs> I don't see any on the dipstick, so we need to add some Earl. I believe Honda's is 5W30, which is unusual because that's usually the kind of uh, oil that you put in snow blowers for the winter. Got plenty of gas, uh, more than half. So let's put some Earl in here. Check that. I just wanted to confirm, I looked it up. They actually take 10W30 for lawn, uh, Honda lawnmowers is 10W30 which makes a little more sense now. I've got some of this Lucas oil. I don't need to push them anymore because I'm no longer sponsored. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm still gonna fill it to about the threads. It only takes about 10 ounces for lawnmower engines typically, at least for the Briggs and Stratton kinds. Uh, that, I don't know if that was 10 ounces, but it seems to be all the way down. Uh -huh. Yep, needs more. Perfect. A little bit over the line. It's good. All right, fellas, so we got oil in there now. It's got plenty of gas. Should we just try to start it? I don't see any um, choke lever or anything. The fuel shut off is off. Let's just give her a couple of pulls. What do you guys think? You guys think it'll start? I don't think it will. Ten pulls without my shoulder 
being pulled out. So it didn't start. Next thing we're gonna do is take the air cleaner off, at least the cover, a little dusty. That's very bad. <laughs> the flap is closed, so it's on choke. And now we have more air, let's give, us, let's give it some more pulls. It's not going to work. Spark plug, let's see, this wire is in there, moving it around so it makes better contact with the metal. So get some uh, starter fluid. Okay, the PSENG guys finally went home and we now have power. Spraying some, um, oh, you know what? The choke flap is kind of stuck, it won't open. Okay, starts with starting fluid, which is good. Engine sounds really good. I have a feeling the carburetor's dirty. <sighs> I wanted to avoid that. I, I I don't really get the just pull it and it starts kind of deals anymore. I have gotten them, but once in a while you do have to do a carburetor clean. So uh, Honda ones are kind of a pain in the butt, depending on what kind it is. They're all like a sandwich, you know what I mean? Air filter base, gasket, carburetor. Spacer, gasket, another spacer, gasket. It's like eight things. You got to put it on the stud and put it in all at once. Kind of tricky. So here we go. Let's take off the air cleaner base. 10 millimeter. Yep, as you can see, it's one long stud. Now you're committed. Once you get these two studs out, you're committed. You're going to have to pull this whole thing off in one sandwich. See that? See how that works? The whole thing is like a sandwich. I hate it. All right, uh, I'm gonna take the studs out because we have to. We have to look at it. So I'm gonna hold it like a sandwich, so the sandwich is closed. Pulling out the two bolts. So here we go. I want to make sure that I get everything right because if you mix it up, you're in a world of hurt. So there is the air filter base. Next was the. You guys see that? Next is a gasket. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna put it like this. If you guys at the top or the bottom, whatever. Anyway, that went like this. Down. Then the carburetor itself. On the back end, you've got this spacer, see? With this gasket on top of it. Actually, that wasn't too bad. And then you have the um, linkage here. This is for the vent to the base over here. Here's the thing. So without taking the linkage off, could I just get away with flipping this over and checking the nut? Let's see if we can just take the bowl off. There we go. Shoot. I forgot about the fuel. Now it's leaking all over the driveway. Oh my God, just, there we go. Let me go get something really quick. I've got a towel here. I wanna make sure you guys can see. I'm moving my arm over. <laughs> so here we go. Here's the nut holding the bowl. It's got a good gasket on it. Let's take it out. What do you guys think? Dirty, corroded, gummed? What the hell looks great? That doesn't make any damn sense at all. It doesn't make any sense why it didn't stay starting. So that was surprising. I, I think I should have blew some more stuff in there. Um, I think it's because the choke might have been closed. But it should be though, you know? Either way, we're just gonna blow out the holes. Blow the inside a little bit. A new angle so you guys can see a little better.
Okay, so we cleaned the carburetor. It was already pretty clean, you know. Um, not 100% sure it went on just right. There was a lever on the top that, I don't know, was, I don't know if it has that wax thing where the engine heats up and the wax thing pushes out, therefore opening the choke flap. I don't know, I think that's how it is, I'm not sure. Uh, let's give it a couple of pulls. It ran better, but still stops. I busted the fuel line trying to remove it. I wanted to remove it to see if it was actively shooting out um, gas and it's not clogged. I thought that maybe the fuel line was collapsed or something was blocking it, not getting fuel. I'm gonna replace it with this one, same diameter. So I've been messing with this for a bit and this mechanism here holds the choke. The choke is closed to start, right? The minute I pull start it, this thing pushes that open, which is supposed to happen. Okay, now I think that the uh, the wax, I think it has one of those wax thingamajigs, which pushes this open when it, the engine gets hot, and that's why it's closed. But before, it was like, not that I ran it very long, so it shouldn't be hot, but it, it stayed open like that, so I couldn't start it. I took the uh, air cleaner base off just so I could see what was going on, because with the base on, you can't see what was going on. So now it's on, um, the choke is closed, so it should start. Then once it heats up, the wax thing pushes this out and opens the choke flap before this was just open like that you know so i couldn't start it it's a little tricky i mean i think this is the one with the wax thing i'm pretty sure it is which means i might have to order a new wax thing because over the years they don't expand anymore but right now it seems like it's okay let me try it start again unless it's hot I'm gonna start it up again and run it for a while so it's hot So I was watching this thing move, which means the wax thing does move when the engine is hot. So it does keep that open. The problem is this carburetor will not run with the choke flap completely open, which it should. Because when it's cold, this thing retracts, flap is closed, 
And then when the engine's hot, the wax does push this open to wide open, but it surges when it's wide open because there's still something blocking that. So I might have to I might have to ultrasonic clean it or clean it better. I didn't take the main jet out, which I should think I should try. <laughs> Amazon guy just came. This is a Powdium. 150 watt power bank for your laptop computer and recharging. Uh, 42,000 milliamps per hour. And it's like a power bank, you know? Before you like laptop computer. There's a nice cool little leather or faux leather handle here. And as you can see, it's got USB ports in here. Um, USB-C input and an AC 110 plug with a flashlight. When you turn on the power, it says 49% already. Got a light, blinks, and SOS. Cool. So, you know, you can use this to, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it's enough to do power tools but uh, like a light or something, and you can uh, charge up your electronics, your iPad, your laptop, that kind of thing. Very cool, from Powdium. Really handy to have. Keep this in your car. You can even power uh, AC in here. Very nice. So you can recharge this again and get it to 100, and then use it when you have a blackout or you need power and recharge those uh, mobile devices, including your laptop. Very cool. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested. Plug the power cord on, and now it's charging. So as you saw, I took the whole carburetor part and cleaned it once more. It was already clean, but I took the main jet out successfully and cleaned it all out. So putting it back in, I feel a difference than before. When I push it manually down here, the wax thing, now the flap is completely closed. And now when I let go, it completely closes where the other one was kind of ajar. In other words, this connection feels much more smoother and in place. I think before when I put this sandwich on, something was caught. So I think this, I think this did it. Let's try it now. Take it over here, bro. Take it in? Yes, sir. No problem, man. How's everything looking? Everything, everything is good, man. How about you? Awesome. All right, man. I'll go in, all right? Thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend, too. You too, man. Thank you. FedEx just delivered another product. This looks like uh, one of these power stations, which is very cool. They're very popular nowadays. Charging this one up now to 58%. All right. I, I always hated these Hondas, all right? If it doesn't just start right up, uh, you got to work on them. I just hate them. I don't know how you guys feel about Hondas. When they work, they work great. But if they don't work... Nightmare. Nightmare to fix. I hate them. Hate Hondas. Here we go. Oh, I should do the fuel shut off thing. Duh. Yeah, man. I don't know how you guys feel about Hondas, but honestly, uh, the most head scratchers I've ever had was on Hondas. There were a few that I just could not figure out. And if you have to mess with the kind that has the double clutch on the bottom with the double four blades, whatever, oh my God, what a complete freaking nightmare. Oh, did you guys see before? when I was, this thing was running, self-propulsion works great. So all we need to do is get this thing running good. And unfortunately I don't have a bag for this, but uh, this would sell for pretty decent money. Run 
runs really well now. And how about it? It's still closed. Let's see if it starts up right away. choke stayed closed, didn't open right away until a few seconds later it opened up again. And it backfired. Alright, it just, I think it's fixed now because before when I put the sandwich on I felt like it was catching and I just put it on, you know. This, this time, I actually put it in slowly, one each side, made sure, made sure that each piece was just put on just perfectly, and I tightened the screws on slowly, moved it around slowly, right in the middle. So before, I think I hastily put them on, and it was catching something on this mechanism here. But now it seems like it's good, and it runs really well, and it starts up when you need it to, except for now. fix this mower I'm gonna go and get a new um, filter I believe Hypa sent me some and uh, we put a new filter in here it already looks good I'm just gonna clean it off with some super clean aerosol foam just a quick wipe down you know what I mean wipe it down take some pictures and there you go, just a quick wipe down. This thing's ready to sell. So there you go. Picked it up last night with Boba for free. That's right, free. Did a carburetor clean today, twice. Checked out the wax thing that pushes out the choke thing. Seems to be okay. Did a wipe down with super clean. Changed the fuel line that was cracked and bad. Changed an air filter, self propulsion works good high wheels in the past I probably would have sold this for maybe 125 because it doesn't have a bagger uh, but now with the prices being the way they are no bagger Honda engine front self propelled everything in excellent condition $200 that's right without a bag take as much as 125 now it starts perfectly <laughs> See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.